I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the February 12, 2018 Board of Selectmen meeting. And we'll start off the meeting with our Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we're starting a little early tonight, 6.30. Um, we're having a meeting with the uh, joint with the Board of Health and uh, there's an appointment of an interim Board of Health member um, and that appointment uh, once appointed tonight will um, is from February 12th, 2018 until May 12th, 2018, which is the town election. The applicants are uh, Matthew Newman from High Street and Evan Smith and Jessica Circle. So we have the Board of Health numbers. Or how would you like to do this? Is there a question or did you want us to do something? Yeah, is there anything that you'd like to say or do you want to? No, no, I, um, glad to be here. I would like to formally state for the record uh, with heavy heart, I'm sure the Board of Selectmen accepted the resignation of our chair, Dr. Dagny. Um, in the four years that I served under her, I thought she was an excellent chair, very fair and impartial. Um, for personal reasons, she has stepped aside, and, and I look forward to not only the Board of Health, but also the Board of Selectmen making a joint decision and actually filling her slot for the next nine weeks. I think it's very important that we have a third member of the board between now our elections in May. Okay. Um, is either uh, Matthew Newman or Evan Smith here? Yeah. Huh? They're both here. They're both here. Okay. Um, well, uh, the vacancy was posted. Um, on the town website, uh, Facebook page on Tuesday, February 6th, and uh, received 2,984 views and shares of the post, and it was also posted again on Thursday, February 8th um, at 8.58 a.m. and received 1,686 views and shares on the post. And two applicants were received for the interim vacancy. Um, Matt Newman of 183 High Street. Um, in his previous board experience, uh, he served seven years on the Recreation Commission, two years on the Community Preservation, and many years at the Liberia Drake Library. So if Matthew would like to take the uh, podium here a little bit, identify yourself, and um, tell the selectmen uh, why you would be the best candidate for this job. Well, good evening. Uh, as you can see on the personal level, I live at 183 High Street. I've been here 14 years. Uh, I have two children and a wife. And, uh, of course. <laughs> uh, well, some people have that with yeah. a wife. So. <laughs> uh, basically, um, I spent some time on the Recreation Board and the CPC. And, uh, I'm a member of St. Equus Church, and I'm active there. And, um, I just love my community, and I want to get back into it. I've had a couple of years off where I've been working, and the kids are getting older, so I'd like to get back into it. And um, I'm a positive person that 
enjoys being part of a board. I feel I have a lot to offer regardless of any issues because I'm open-minded and enjoy serving. So that's one of my specialties. Um, and just, uh, oh, in general, I feel, you know, I'm a homeowner. Um, so I'm familiar with, you know, issues when it comes to health. I've worked in restaurants. Um, I've worked in supermarkets. So I'm very familiar with a lot of things that go on with the board. And um, I feel I could add, you know, something to it. I also had a, you know, work with, um, you know, the tree lighting sometimes. It's, I just like to get involved, and if I can add, um, you know, help at any any level, I enjoy it. So that's my main motivation, and uh, I hope, you know, I can see that, we, you know, a younger candidate back there. I'm glad to see him get involved, but, you know, it's up to you guys, but I can just tell you that I, what I bring to the table on a personal level and professional level is, you know, um, basically, you know, I'm a positive person that enjoys getting involved and helping out. Awesome. So I think that would be an asset to any board. Yes. Uh, does the board have any questions of the candidate? Mm -hmm. I'd like to ask a question of Maft. Um, <clears throat> this is an interim appointment, and uh, in May the seat will have to be run for at the election. Are you, if you were to be appointed, are you planning on running for a full term? Well, I would think, you know, um, that would be my main motivation to get involved for the next three months. I don't think I would just. Uh, so I, okay. I'm sure that's what you guys would be looking for and um, knowing that I've been involved before where I'm sure you just don't want somebody for three months and after someone's served four years you don't want somebody that's just going to do three months and then you not know, and be done with it so I guess the procedure would I'd have to probably pull papers right uh, yes after but my main focus is if you if you do appoint me uh, to give it my all and then go from there and if that's the procedure as far as the is that seat up? Uh, is this seat up in May? Yes. Is that what it is? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I can say for the record that I would, uh, I would guess I would have to pull papers and continue to try and work on what I, if I am appointed, what I, you know, started. So. If you were appointed tonight, I'd recommend that uh, you would go to the town clerk's office and where they would give you all the information that's required to, uh, have your name on the ballot should you be appointed. Sure. Thank no you. Thank you. Ken? Uh, I, and I think most of us here uh, know Matt uh, through the Recreation Department, tree lighting, and uh, other uh, events around town. <clears throat> I know you as a very conscientious, energetic man, personable fellow, and uh, I'm just glad the public has a chance to get to meet you too. I appreciate that. Anybody else? Mr. Newman, thank you for expressing an interest in the position. It's probably not a fair question, but I've been known to ask unfair questions in the past. So if you were to be appointed, what would these, if, if these next nine weeks were to exceed your expectations sitting on the board, what would that look like for you? You're right, boy. <laughs> See, uh, touche. <laughs> uh, as far as, ex what do you mean, exceed expectations? Is um, it, it was better than I thought? And yeah, the more. end of these nine weeks, sure. you would say, wow, I made the right decision. Well, you know, I absolutely, yeah, because um, that's a good, that's, that's a fair question, because I can't sit here and say I have full knowledge of everything you do and everything, but what I do have is the willingness to learn. And, and if it does exceed, because it's, it's what you put in for the effort. So as far as meetings and figuring things out, and I'm sure that would happen because I, am, you know, I enjoy learning, and especially when it comes to uh, working with others on a board, and you, you need that. And I, I think it would probably exceed my expectations because I'm here tonight with some knowledge, but I, I honestly can tell you, I'm sure we're not all full of, we're not all engineers and we're not all, you have to use what qualities you have and, and carry with that, so. Thank you. Is that answering your 
question? Of course. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Hearing none. And we we thank, thank you. you. And, thank um, you. Thank you. Please hang around for a little bit. Sure. Um, the next candidate is Evan Smith of uh, 17 Jessica Circle. Um, is both a student and works in construction, septic, mm -hmm. insulation related field, and has knowledge of sanitary requirements. So, um, how are you doing, Evan? Good, yeah, how are you? Good. Uh, I'm just simply looking to learn, uh, getting on a board that uh, would more uh, teach me about what I'm going to be doing in school next year as a student. Um, I've lived in town most of my life and uh, followed my grandmother around as she's traveling around town doing town things. Um, just the openness to learn, that's really it. Does anybody have any questions to Evan? I have, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, Evan, I see uh, here that uh, you work in a construction septic installation related fields. Would the company yes, that you work for, do they go before the Board of Health for any reason? Do you know? Yes. However, they do not do a whole lot of work in Pembroke. Uh, for the nine months that I've worked for them, we have not done one job in Pembroke, so I would not be in conflict of interest with them. I would just uh, have to remind you that should that occur, you would probably, at the direction of the chairman, have to recuse yourself from voting on any issue, should that ever occur. Yes. And I'm going to ask you the same question that I asked uh, Matthew. Uh, if you are appointed tonight by our boards, uh, it's for an interim term, would you, are you planning on then, if you are appointed, taking out papers to be on the ballot for a three-year term? Uh, due to schooling being in October, um, this term I would not be pulling out papers just because I wouldn't be able to give myself 100% effort through the next term. But in the future, seeing how, you know, if I get appointed today, then I would uh, definitely consider pulling out papers in the future. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else? Person. Yeah, yeah uh, similar to Matt, uh, I, I know Evan uh, through your family, through the whole Smith family, your, your mom, your aunt, your grandma. Um, Evan has been, as as we all know, Evan has been a, a great contr contributor to the community uh, as best he can as, as, a, as a young man, and, and I'm glad to see that uh, you want to take that and move forward as a, as a young adult. Uh, so this is a great first step. And uh, with however the board votes here tonight, uh, please keep up those efforts in your interest. But more, more folks like you uh, come forward. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Bill? Mr. Smith, 10 years ago as an 18-year-old, <laughs> <laughs> I probably wouldn't find myself standing up here. So I give you a lot of credit for coming up here. You you mentioned uh, your family very politically involved. Just give me one little nugget or one lesson that you've learned. You mentioned following your grandmother around. Just share one little experience that has been a, a valuable lesson for you. Uh, one experience, one thing I've learned. One thing I've learned is community first. And uh, experience would be to just always agree with people and share your thoughts as they go, but always be open-minded about different things in town. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, well, Mr. Chairman, I had my hand up, but oh, I didn't see you. I, I'd say I, should I would just give testimony to the fact that Evan is a great young man, and I've had uh, the pleasure of seeing him do some uh, construction work and uh, some of the work that he's done around town, and it's just outstanding. Um, well, that concludes the applicants. Um, the vote is a majority of uh, five members of the Board of Selectmen and the two remaining members of the Board of Health. So, um, 
Yes. Unless anybody else has any other questions, um, I, would, I need a uh, nomination for a candidate. Mr. Chairman, I would um, move the name of Matthew Newman to uh, fill the vacancy. Okay. And do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Um, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, then. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. So that would be five from the board. We did I. Both tonight? We both did I. Both tonight. Okay. So it'll be five to two. No. I said I. They said I. Oh, you said I. I thought yeah. you said tonight. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So it'll be seven uh, in seven favor. Seven. Okay. Um, well, I pre appreciate uh, both of you guys coming forward um, for the appointment. Um, the uh, vote is is seven for Mr. Newman, and um, six. Um, did, you, did you say that? No, I was opposed. You were opposed. I didn't hear that either, so I guess I got it. So it would be uh, uh, six to one. Okay. Um, I appreciate uh, both of you coming in, and um, just a, a word to Evan that uh, you get a long future ahead of you. Um, I'd like to see you come back again and uh, maybe join a board and uh, and uh, help out in the town. And we'd like to see um, you know young kids uh, coming forward. So it's uh, it's a pleasure to see uh, somebody as young as you coming in here and it has an interest in the town because we do need that. We need to take uh, Mr. Newman upstairs to the town clerk's office right now after this meeting. Okay. Yes. And we'll Yes. So we will be sworn in. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Okay. Look forward to winning. Congratulations right. and uh, yeah. good luck. Thank you, gentlemen. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. I'm sorry about that. I didn't hear you say that. No, no, Yeah. Doesn't make a difference when it's no. six to one. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, we also, um, next up on the agenda is a um, Council on Agents uh, Directive Screening Committee uh, recommendation and appointment. And um, this was uh, the Board of Selectmen voted to have uh, Selectman Stone represent the board on the Council on Aging uh, Director Screening Committee. Um, between the advertisement and submission deadline, 26 resumes were received and five more were received after the deadline for submission. All 31 submissions were reviewed, screened, and reviewed by both the town administrator, former COA Director Anna Sheary, and at their January meeting, Anna Sherry presented to the Council on Aging Board the screening, review, and ranking process and obtained their approval for the process. The COA Board chose their members, uh, Linda Osborne, Sue Hewitt, as well as Anna Sherry to participate in the Council on Aging Direct the Screening Committee, joining Selectman Stone and the Town Administrator Ed Thorne. The COA Director Screening Committee performed the final screening review, candidate selection, and interview. On February 7th, four candidates were interviewed to <coughs> interview before the committee. One candidate withdrew for health reasons. Of the three candidates interviewed, the COA, COA Director Screening Committee was unanimous on their recommendation to the selectmen to appoint Susan Shea is the Council of Aging Director for the Town of Pembroke. Um, the ad and Mr. Shea's resume and letter of interest are attached, and uh, this position appears 
in the classification of compensation bylaws in Schedule A, SA-29. So is there anybody that has any questions or concerns? Uh, Ken? I think since Lou sat on the committee, if you could give us a, a brief report. Uh, yes, I, I would have to uh, <clears throat> uh, say some of the things that uh, Bill has. First of all, um, <clears throat> we met with uh, uh, Ed and uh, came up with uh, an ad and where the ad would be placed, job descriptions of the job, salary requirements, everything that's necessary when you advertise a position to work at the town of Pembroke. The chairman of the Council on Aging Board, Janet LeBurge, met with her board and selected uh, Linda Osborne and Sue Ellen Hewitt and Anna Seary, um, the former Council on Aging director, uh, agreed to participate and uh, work closely with the COA board and with Ed Fawn and Sabrina Chilcott to uh, bring all of the uh, resumes that were received. There were 31 of them. And uh, Ed and uh, Anna Siri screened them all and uh, got them down to four. And uh, we scheduled interviews, one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews with the committee uh, three people were able to make it. The fourth one had an illness problem and dropped out. So after we reviewed the three candidates that we considered to be the best of the number of resumes that responded, um, it was obvious to us that the uh, right choice for the town was Susan Shea, who is the outreach worker at the Council on Aging and has been working very closely with the outgoing director, Anna Seary. So we weighed everything that was in front of us and uh, we unanimously agreed to present to the board Susan Shea as our recommended candidate for Council on Aging director. And if there are no more questions or from anyone, uh, I would like to move the appointment of Susan Shea as the director of the Council on Aging. Second. Here we have a um, motion and a second to appoint Susan Shea. Is there any questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor of the appointment, please say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed, please say no. Ayes have it, so it will be five to zero. I'd just like to uh, say, Mr. Chairman, that I want to thank the uh, board for allowing the committee to do what we did, having confidence in the people that were on the committee. And uh, so I, I thank the board for that. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you for spending the extra time and effort also with Ed that um, I'm doing these because I've been involved in a lot of them myself and they, they take a long time and there's a process um, to try to get the, the right person for the right job. So um, thank you for that. Okay. Um, next up on the agenda would be the DPW. Um, director, Commissioners of the DPW for fiscal year 19 budget request. Are they around anywhere? No, Mr. Chairman, uh, I talked to the Chairman, uh, Mr. Bastinelli, today, and uh, they wanted to be uh, put on the agenda in two weeks. Two weeks, okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question of uh, the town administrator? Are we also going to schedule the librarian and the uh, director of the COA 
in to discuss their requests? That's the tentative plan right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Please. Chairman, you have a member of the audience who looks a lot better than the last time he was here. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Mr. Puelli, he does look uh, pretty chipper out there tonight. Good to see you here. Thank you. It's good to be here. Literally good to <laughs> yes. be here. And, yes. uh, I want to start and hopefully say uh, uh, a special thank you to uh, Selectman Tribuco who was kind enough to get uh, the 911 people to me in time. Uh, I'm a bit of a medical miracle for someone who uh, suffered a stroke and went through what I went through and 24 hours later walked out of South Shore Hospital. So I thought I'd go back into the building and let people know I'm uh, alive, well, full motion, full everything. Uh, why the mysteries of uh, Facebook and all that stuff. I, I think my demise was uh, greatly written, and uh, I'm here standing before you. So uh, yeah. each and every one of you, thank you. Uh, I hope I didn't throw a commitment to a monkey wrench into your agenda that night, but uh, as the Irish have always said, it's better to be seen than viewed, and I'm very happy to be uh, sitting here standing here in front of you guys. So I just want to come and say a thank you. So. I think everybody was trying to decide who's going to go with you in the ambulance <laughs> to the hospital. And, uh, so. Well, I've got to tell you, thank Kevin for Pembroke PD, Pembroke Fire, you know, to, to say they're the best, but uh, when you're going to Group 53 and they tell you blood pressure is 242 over something, that's not a number you want to hear. No, um, that's for sure. I, I wasn't totally optimistic. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. I said before you three weeks later, grateful <laughs> and humble, to say the least. Appreciate it. Thank so, you. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate see you. all the work you guys do. Well, Thank you. Glad you're doing well and back, Dave. Just to remind you, next Wednesday we have a, another meeting Wednesday night, so time to get back to work. <laughs> yeah, Karen already sent me back to work, so that's a <laughs> yeah, I've actually been to school committee meetings, so I'm, I'm getting there a little by a little, okay. sir, but uh, yeah. I will do my best. Look forward to it. Very good. I'm glad you're well. Thank you. That's good. Um, just remind everybody also that. Um, uh, note that this meeting is being made available to the public through a live video and audio broadcast on Comcast Government Access Channel 15 and is being recorded for broadcast at future dates. So comments made in open session will be recorded. Um, next up on the agenda is actually 7.30, but um, we can wait a little bit for that. Is, there, is, that, is that a hearing or not? No, it's not. It's just the application. Is uh, Nicholas Wilson here? No. Oh, not I'm working next to when he walks in the room. Okay, so we can wait. Uh, we get some other items yep. to bring up anyway. Uh, what action items? Um, so we need to uh, accept a donation of a lease vehicle from McGee, a pre owned superstore, to the police department. Tell us anything about that, uh, Ed? Well, I think uh, Chief Wall was uh, is requesting that the uh, Board of Selectmen accept the donation of uh, McGee pre-owned superstore by uh, General Manager Ahmed uh, Shahid of a lease vehicle for the uh, use of the department's uh, plain clothes officers. And we are asking that the uh, Board of Selectmen accept the donation of McGee of this uh, vehicle. I would move acceptance. Second. Okay. And now uh, lease value would be three thousand <laughs> excuse me, three thousand six hundred dollars. So unless there's any other questions or comments, uh, you have one? I just want to say that it's a uh, very magnanimous of of McGee to offer this to the to the police station as a, as a gift. Uh, I believe this is due to a police vehicle that was involved in an accident and has been taken out of service. And as the insurance process goes through, when the town does get paid the insurance that goes into the general fund, not the police station's fund, to buy a new cruiser. So right now they're stuck without, without a vehicle. So it's very nice of uh, McGee, a local business, to step up for this. Very good. For the explanation. Need to vote. Okay. Uh, so, unless there's any other uh, questions or comments, 
Take a vote. Everybody that's in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Hearing none, then it would be 5-4, which is a great thing. So there was a lot of um, well, these um, uh, vehicle uh, uh, ownerships or whatever all around the Commonwealth that do the same thing, that, that give um, a car to the town for uh, drug purposes, and they put their drug officer on it or whatever, and uh, donated by uh, that particular uh, place, but it's nice to see that McGee, um, you know, has stepped forward and helped out the town. So. Uh, consider request for appointment uh, community task force of Michelle Burt and Brian Van Riper. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I move that Brian Van Riper as the planning board's representative and Michelle Burt as a citizen at large representative of the appointed to the community center study committee. Second. Any questions or comments? Would Mrs. Burt is in the audience. Do you, would you like to say anything? Or? No, I'm just excited to be a part of the uh, committee. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. I wish you had an exciting story like me. <laughs> you really don't wish you had an exciting story like that. Alrighty. Unless there's any other questions or comments, then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Congratulations. We'll get you while we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for serving. Uh, to consider a one-day liquor license for the Pembroke Historic Society event, which will be Sunday, April 8th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And this is the annual meeting and breakfast, pancake breakfast, and they seek to serve mimosas and Bloody Marys at the Historic Society building at 116 Center Street on that date of uh, April 8th from 9 to 2. So if you're interested in a pancake breakfast with a with a uh, Bloody Mary chaser, then there we go. Mr. Chairman, I would move granting a one-day liquor license to the Pembroke Historical Society for their pancake breakfast on April 8th. Second. Okay, and just uh, anybody have any questions or comments? Hearing none, the liquor license is under Mass General Laws 138, Section 14, to serve all alcoholic beverages uh, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on April 8th at 116 Center Street. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? So the ayes have it. Five to the several. Well, good luck with their breakfast. I'm one for liking breakfasts. <laughs> it's also a uh, vote to accept the minutes of February 5th, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board vote to accept the minutes of the selectmen's meeting of February 5th, 2018 as written. Second. Having a motion and a second. And anybody have any questions or concerns? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Yeah, I shout. Uh, you have a town administrator's report tonight? Uh, just one thing. Uh, as I shared with the board um, late last week, we received word from the community compact program that uh, we received a $10,000 grant for the town to uh, uh, do a uh, Americans with Disabilities Act transition plan and so we're in the process right now of putting together an RFQ so that we would send out to uh, firms that specialize in doing these and uh, uh, and also uh, the Old Colony Planning Council as well. Yep. And further to that Ed, uh, as you know the Commission on Disabilities here in town is uh, very keen to be of any assistance that they can mm -hmm. Um, so I know there are certain administrative procedures that um, they don't have to be day-to-day -day involved with, but if you can keep them involved with uh, 
uh, all the correspondence that they need to be involved with. Uh, absolutely, we will. Okay. Uh, nothing else? And we'll ask the selectman. Anybody have anything to ask the selectman? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think I would have to ask this question on the town administrator. Um, several people have reported that uh, when they get their uh, trash and their recycling totas picked up, there has been occasions when one truck has taken both. And I, uh, I know we have had some issues in the past with vehicle shortages, also a severe snowstorm uh, preventing the usual trucks to be on the road safely. Is that, is, has that been the case? One time, and that was in a situation where we were backlogged with pickup, and we got to the point where we almost would have had, and in several neighborhoods would go a whole week without getting tr any trash picked up. And that was when uh, we had a series of storms that forced um, the, uh, with the holiday and with the storm, forced the uh, backup between two and three days. And so um, we were able to get clearance through the uh, special waiver that would allow us to do that because of the emergency situation. We didn't want anybody to go over a week without having it, anything picked up. So that just happened on one day. Great, thank you. I'd just like to say to the public that may be watching or listening, to us that uh, this is the situation that that we are aware of. Uh, trash and recycling is handled through the selectman's office. And uh, we also were involved with negotiating the contract with the hauler. So we're well aware of what has to be done. And uh, unfortunately, on that one occasion, we had that issue. And we had, uh, as Ed has said, he had to make a decision. And uh, the, the decision was pick it up or tell people they'd have to wait another week. So it isn't something that we are not aware of. I just wanted to make sure that uh, Ed had the opportunity of explaining why that happened. Thank you. All righty. Is there any new business to discuss? Hearing none, we have some um, upcoming issues. Uh, on February 26th at 7 o'clock, the First Church is going to be here to request the use of the town Memorial Green for Old Home Day Fair, which is a yearly thing. On March 5th at 7, the Plymouth County Treasurer Tom O'Brien uh, from the Plymouth County Retirement uh, will give an update. Also on March 5th at 7.30, the school committee, committee will come in to talk about their fiscal year 19 budget presentation. Um, April 23rd is the signing of the uh, town meeting warrants. May 8th is the annual town meeting. And May 12th is the annual town election. Um, the only thing we got left is um, Nicholas Wilson, and it's like eight past. Is a you know maybe the board might want to take a brief. Re I, I'm Motion not sure. To recess for ten minutes. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to be here or not. Okay. So um, yeah, he said he was planning to come in. Oh, okay. He did. Okay. Well, if you could take a recess and then we could, you guys we'll sign care of that. Um, The other thing is. Um, just uh, so that I don't, I don't forget it. I mean, I know this winter has been a really cold winter. There's been a lot of ice on the ponds, um, but we've had so much warm weather lately that the ice really is not safe now. Um, so you really have to watch your animals. We don't want dogs and other animals going out onto the ice, um, especially kids. So I just uh, give a note to the parents out there: make sure that you counsel your kids to stay off of the ice and. Um, we're going to have another safe year this year without having any problems. So, just that word on that. So, we're going to take a 10 minute recess and uh, we'll be back hopefully to uh, talk about. Uh, yeah.
Thanks. Nicholas Wilson and um, his common victory of the license application for the 35 School Street. So we'll uh, come back uh, in uh, open session. Again, uh, took a little 10 minute recess here. And uh, we do we have the candidate um, that did uh, come in. So um, this is for a common victim of license application. Uh, Gather LLC at 35 School Street. The applicant is Nicholas Wilson, 27 Popular Street, Westwood. He is requesting to um, prepare and serve food to the public from 7 a.m. So 10 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. He has received his certificate of occupancy from the building inspector and the fire chief. He has completed his uh, hearing uh, without appeal through the ZBA and received a special permit to operate a restaurant. Um, he has scheduled his health inspection and has received food permits and submitted his requested certification to the Board of Health. They have filed a business certificate with the town clerk, Mary Ann Smith. So, um, Mr. Wilson, would you uh, like to tell us something about yourself and your restaurant? Yes, absolutely. Um, there are some snacks for you guys, too. Um, but we are with uh, Gather Restaurant, uh, myself and my business partner, Shelton. Um, we uh, operate a breakfast and lunch um, Tuesday through Saturday. Uh, and Sunday, we're doing family-style dinner um, from uh, well, two different seatings. Um, it's a focus on uh, community um, and sort of a family-style setting. Um, so uh, Sundays, it'll be um, designed after going to grandma's house after church. Um, so you'll come in, it'll be communal-style seating. Uh, you'll sit where you sit, and then we'll serve everything family-style. Um, so it'll be designed sort of like a Thanksgiving dinner, you know, past the potatoes, past the chicken, um, and that way it encourages everyone to go back to this lost art of having to communicate with each other, um, especially over dinner, um, and get back to some of these wholesome family values, um, and, uh, you know, just being able to operate with uh, good food, good time, quality food, quality time. Awesome. Anybody have any questions? Are you going to ban cell phones while you're serving dinner? So, <laughs> so it is it is encouraged to unplug. Um, so we actually made a conscious effort. We do not have a TV um, in there. Um, uh, you know, uh, we actually don't have like a lot of plugs and things like that to even charge cell phones or to you know, you know, use your computer. We do have uh, free Wi-Fi, but. We want people to be able to come in and actually talk with each other. Um, we, uh, you know, want to be able to create an environment as if you were coming to any one of uh, our houses. Um, you know, if you're not just going to sit there and sort of zone out, you're going to have to interact with each other. And we want to be able to know who you are. We want to be able to you know, call you on a first name basis. We want to know how your kids are, how your grandkids are, who won the game, how many scores they got in hockey. Um, you know, we want, we want you to be able to know who our kids are, who our wife is. So, you know, if you see my son Skyler running around, I want you guys to be like, hey, Skyler, stop acting up. You know, it's, that's, that's the type of environment that we want to be able to have and encourage um, as if you were, you know, at, at your family's house. So that's that's what we're going for, but getting really good food too. <laughs> awesome. I have one other question. Could you tell us again and the public about your Sunday special dinners? Yes. You said there'd be a couple of seatings. Yeah. You want to repeat that again? For Absolutely. People? So um, so we're starting off with two seatings right now: a four o'clock and a six o'clock seating. Um, that'll be the only day that we're actually taking reservations. Um, so uh, what's happening is that Chef Shelton will be posting the menu um, online about three weeks in advance. There'll be a three-course meal, um, an appetizer, entree, and dessert. Um, when you arrive, you'll check in, and the seating that we'll have will sort of be three different tables. Um, so, you know, if two of you made a reservation and four of you made a reservation and none of you guys know each other, 
all of you guys might be sitting together at the same table. Um, and again, it's to be able to get to know people and interact with people that you might not necessarily ever know or ever interact with. Um, we're there to provide the food. You guys drive the conversation. Um, the only time that you know we'll have to intervene if it gets a little bit out of control with politics or something like that. You know, let's 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 help and and, and redirect. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, when you come in, um, you'll 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 get the food. Everything is actually served um, in family style, um, in like old school Pyrex from like the 50s and 60s. Um, my family collects old school Pyrex. Um, it's something that's like really important and dear to us. Um, and so that's actually all being implemented in the restaurant. So you'll actually, you know, talk to each other to be able to pass, pass the food around and, uh, you know, dish out your meals. Um, and like I said, just to be able to have that time of getting good food and communicate with each other. Awesome. Well, I, I met the family and uh, was one of their first um, customers on the uh, opening day and it was very good it was a good stop and I'm sure you're going to be successful thank you good. yeah do you have any? Yeah. Uh, sounds exciting mm -hmm. I want to welcome you to Pembroke and I wish you the best thank, thank you. you thank you very much so everyone here has been really great um, you know a lot of the things that we were looking for uh, when we were looking for towns is to have that you know, small town, that community feel. Um, we wanted to be able to be a part of somewhere that we wouldn't feel like we'd be getting lost in the shuffle, somewhere that we felt like we could be able to help make an impact into the community, somewhere that we felt that uh, we could invest in with our children. We all have, we all have small children, all three families that are involved. Um, the oldest is five, and everywhere from five to Old as London, eight, eight, eight months. So, um, so you know, somewhere that we can again just be able to invest in the community um, and stick with those stick with those morals and values that that are important to us. Mr. Chairman, I would move granting the Common Victualler license to Gather LLC. Second. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Five to zero. So yeah, like, looks thank like you, very you much. have your license and uh, thank thank you. Your, uh, yes. congratulations. <laughs> and uh, we hope you do really well down there. And I'm sure that uh, the board, at some time or another, will be down there to check out, uh, you know, how your food is. Please, there, so. please do. Yeah, there's some blueberry muffins and there's yeah. some uh, uh, maple cranberry cookies for you guys. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank, right. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nice people. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I met them just by coincidence. I don't think that there's, uh, there's anything else. The only thing I, that I would like to um, say is that the uh, uh, the boys club uh, roof is almost uh, completely done over there. And uh, I wanted to uh, thank the town and the boards that had the uh, notion to give us the money to hire these people to go over and and uh, do the roof. It's, it's coming out really great. They're doing uh, an excellent job on it. Uh, something that the building has needed for a long time. Um, we put a roof on that um, um, almost 40 years ago um, when we first started the, the building as a boys club and uh, we haven't asked for any money from the town um, in almost 40 years. So this is the first money that the town has actually put into the building. Um, and it is a town building. Um, we finally got that squared away on the paperwork and uh, got the deeds all straightened out and all that stuff. So so I just wanted to uh, say thanks to the people that were involved in making that happen. So uh, looking forward to uh, getting it all painted and fixed up the windows and the rest of it on phase two or whatever this year. and. Uh, uh, making it a uh, landscaped and all that kind of stuff so it looks really nice up there in the center. So, thank you. Motion to adjourn. 
Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Nobody opposed, so I guess we're all set. Right. No meeting next week, right? Uh, right. Ladies and gentlemen, there isn't any meeting next week, um, so we're going to be off for two weeks. And um, so this will conclude tonight's meeting on February 12, 2018, and we will see you in two weeks. And um, hopefully um, keep the snow away for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Good night.